Hello friends, it's Greg here again on the Blue Feather Ephemera channel. I have an eBay store by the same name where I sell vintage magazine print advertising and the goal is to every week make a video to show you what sold from the eBay store. I got a little bit behind in October. This is the third in a series of four makeup videos. So this covers week number 42 of 2024. It's my 39th video in the What Sold series, and it's the third video of the fourth quarter. This covers the, the week of October the 9th through October the 15th. I've got great ads to show you. Without further ado, let's get started. First up, I'm gonna show you a pair of ads that went to a repeat customer. This first one ran in 17 Magazine, 1963. And in the ad here, it just shows a young lady. She's thinking about being a woman in the mirror. It says, suddenly you must cope with a woman's perspiration. And it says that you still have homework and a curfew, but there are signs you're a woman. You are a woman under your arms. So you got to take care of that. $14.77 sent this one out to Texas. The second advertisement here to that Texas buyer ran in Holiday Magazine 1967 and the advertiser is the Desert Inn, Las Vegas, Nevada. It talks about stars on stage and I'll go into some detail about that in just a second. But I chose this for the main featured ad for this video because that lady right there, if she wrecks that motorcycle she's on, then she's going to have the worst case of road rash ever was. That's not the right way to do it. Um, it talks about restaurants, including the most elegant supper club in town, the Monte Carlo, the biggest name in stars, Jimmy Durante, Phil Harris, Bob Newhart, Andy Williams, and Danny Kaye. All that fun's affordable. Rooms start at $10 a night. $12.77 also sent this to Texas. There's another hotel ad to show you this week. This one from Fortune Magazine 1940, and the advertiser is the Plaza Hotel in New York City. Up at the top of the ad there, it says it's uh, facing Central Park. And then uh, on down here, there's not a whole lot of detail but uh, it says the plaza becomes richer in tradition and more modern in convenience. The acknowledged standard of excellence in service plaza rates are moderate. Subway station at the hotel. So that ad was $8.77. It's a partial page. The size was under three inches by just about six and a half. And it's on its way to California. The next ad comes to us from 1977 at a magazine called Byte, spelled B-Y-T-E. And I remember telling you four or five weeks ago, th that was the first time that I had listed and sold advertisements from that title. And also another computer magazine that I got a hold of called Interface Age. These are computer magazines from the 1970s and 80s. I figured I'd try them out. Uh, you know, in, when you consider the per copy cost of the magazines, I'm making pretty good money on them. I'm I'm satisfied with it. You know, it's it's not what I'd call outstanding, but these ads are selling. This one right here, Technical Design Labs of Princeton, New Jersey, Z80 Computer System, and in the detail here, you can just see that. The whole advertisement is just filled with the technical specifications and the different components and features of the different computers here. So, um, you know, I, that, that apparently appealed to somebody. $16.77 sent this back to New Jersey. This is a small advertisement from the magazine called The Open Road for Boys, 1945. Uh, now, those are magazines that I've had real good sales from. And uh, uh, based on what we've seen in recent weeks and what you'll see coming up during the next couple of videos that I make, uh, I consider that those magazines have been a pretty good investment. 
Uh, this advertiser here is FC Taylor Fur Company of St. Louis, Missouri. And you can ride off to them and get a trapping book. And they're trying to entice boys to, you know, earn extra income from trapping fur bear critters. And in the article or in the ad here, it mentions coyotes and foxes specifically. Uh, fox trapping is something that my brother and I tried our hand at back when we were young. And uh, anyway, uh, this is a small ad. It's barely three inches by a little bit more than three and a half. I sold it for $6.77. This ad went to Idaho. This next ad, also from 1963 and also from Seventeen Magazine. And the advertiser is Helena Rubenstein. And the line of cosmetics here is called Boutique. And there's a, a sample of the product right there. But anyway, a striking looking lady with who knows what on her head. $14.77 sent this ad to New York. This is an ad from 1977 that ran in Classic Magazine. And they're just advertising their tennis equipment made by the Prince Manufacturing Company of Princeton, New Jersey. And in the detail here, you can see that they've got, you know, various apparatus for uh, throwing tennis balls. And it says, let Prince crown your tennis game with success. This appealed to somebody in Italy, and it went there for $16.77. This is a neat looking advertisement right here, and I've got just a couple of things to say about it. Um, first of all, it came from Esquire magazine, and I bought several copies of Esquire months ago, and I just got around to, to listing my first copy in recent weeks. This one right here that advertises Esky cards uh, sold within about an hour of listing, and uh, the magazine dates to 1943. And in the image here, you see this big old Great Dane, I think it is, dog on the front of the advertisement. When you look at the detail here, you can use this order form to order various kinds of Esky cards. They've got dog photographs, nature watercolors, uh, sick caricatures, and that... That name, S-Z-Y-K, maybe it's pronounced Zeke. Um, I've listed some prints from magazine pages by that person in the past. I believe that that's the person who did caricatures of all of the German party officials from World War II that I sold for $68. I'm 99% certain about that. Anyway, real fun and interesting caricatures. I love caricatures. I've said that before. Uh, cartoons, glamour photographs, which I guess you'd think of as pinup types of cards. But anyway, just a, a order form for all of those kinds of things featuring a dog on the page here. $18.77 sent this to Michigan. Here's a nice advertisement for luggage by a company called Lady Baltimore. And it says this kit is the whole kit and caboodle and kitten. Apparently because there's a kitten trying to stow away in the makeup case here. Just a cute ad. Uh, I sold it for $16.77. It appeared in Seventeen Magazine 1963. And it's on its way to a repeat customer in Switzerland. Here's an ad from Progressive Farmer Magazine, 1989, and the advertiser is the cab Pfizer Genetics, and they're talking about a hybrid corn that they developed, and basically what's shown in the detail of the ad here is that your crops will be so abundant and so healthy that uh, you'll need one of those big earth-moving construction, uh, construction type trucks to uh, load it into uh, as your harvester harvests the corn. So that's what's in the detail of the picture here. I sold this ad for $12.77. It 
it's on its way to Iowa. I like the look of this ad here from Saturday Evening Post, 1966. This is an advertisement for the whiskey called Old Forester, and it is a Kentucky bourbon. Notice the spelling on the bottle here is W-H-I-S-K-Y. That may be one of the only U.S. whiskeys that leaves the E out of the spelling, like Scotch whiskey and Canadian whiskey. It's spelled like those. But anyway, it's a pretty little ad. Nice view of the harbor here from, I guess, this is a wharf. And uh, it just talks about a walk in a rainy evening in the text of the prose here on the page. It's real pretty. $12.77 sent this to Indiana. Here's the second ad that sold from that Esquire magazine from 1943. The advertiser here is Croton Watches. It's a waterproof watch, and in the detail of the ad, you can see here that they're showing examples of their Aquamatic and their Aquamedico watches. And this is a small ad. It's a partial page, roughly, barely over 5 inches by right around 7 inches. I sold this ad for $10.77. It's on its way to Oregon. Here is proof that your ad doesn't have to be large to sell, and it sure don't have to be fancy to sell. This is an ad for the candy bar called O. Henry, and it says it's America's famous nickel candy bar. And in the detail here, I just want to show you in this picture, it is one and a half inches by four inches. That's all there is to it. This ran in the Quartermaster Review, 1944. I sold it for $8.77, and it went to New York. Here's a fantastic two-page ad from Fortune Magazine, 1967. And uh, what it is, is the William J. Burns International Detective Agency. And so, this is one of only two detective agencies that... Maybe a household name. The other one that I can think of right off is Pinkertons. You hear a lot about Pinkertons, which I'm not sure if they're still around or not. But, um, you know, you, you also think about Wells Fargo, for example. But Wells Fargo wasn't truly just a detective agency. They were more of like a repository that employed detectives. And they had security for when they needed to move assets, you know, just like Brinks or Loomis or some of that kind of stuff. But when you look at the detail of the ad here, they go into some detail about how the company got started. And it talks about a couple of famous cases. Um, in this situation right here, a city election was rigged. And uh, what happened is uh, the clerk that counted votes put the totals in a safe over the weekend and somebody actually broke into the safe and changed the tally of votes. This over here, the dilemma of the double eagles, talks about 1,500 missing gold double eagle coins from the San Francisco Mint and William Burns was the crack detective that solved that case. Um, here you see a personalized note of appreciation from Teddy Roosevelt for work that uh, William Burns did solving uh, land fraud in the in the Northwest during the Roosevelt pre presidency, and then right here you see kind of a high tech closed circuit TV security setup that this company operates. It don't say where. Uh, well, maybe it does um, at a Midwestern plant. Okay. So, anyway, uh, a nice ad, eight, a lot of history here, $18.77 sent this ad to North Carolina. Here we've got a pair of ads that went to the same buyer, and both advertisements were, are for the product called Modess. It's a feminine hygiene product. Um, I just, uh, in the description here, the listing title, I wrote, Blue ball gown, lady, mansion, palace. It looks like a palace. It could be, you know, uh, uh, built more estates in 
North Car- Asheville, North Carolina. It could be the Waldorf Astoria, or it could be some kind of a private residence, but I, I couldn't identify the place. But that's all there is to this ad right here. This one ran in 1959 in McCall's Magazine. I charged $14.77 for it. And the second one here is seven years older, and it's from Ladies Home Journal, 1952. The model in this advertisement here, I was able to find her. Her name is Dorian. I don't know if you pronounce it Lee or Lay. Uh, when I was growing up, a name spelled this way would be pronounced Lay, L-E-I-G-H. Uh, but it may be Lee. Anyway, uh, I read about her that she was considered one of the first supermodels. Now, I think that the tapestry in the background is interesting here, but I could not find the tapestry or any information about where it hangs. But again, this product is a uh, Mod S feminine hygiene product. This one I sold for $18.77. Both of these are on their way to New York. One customer bought both of these next two advertisements here. Uh, this one for Wilson Sports Equipment. In the detail of the ad here, it shows a volleyball and a football and a basketball. It says, if it's a Wilson, it's the last word in sports equipment. And so $18.77 is the price I charged for this one. And this came from that magazine called The Open Road for Boys. I mentioned it earlier. I said it's been a good investment. These two ads here are another reason why I say that. Let's look at the next one. This second one, also a Wilson ad. And you see a basketball here. It's talking about basketball equipment specifically. And it's got a coach uh, on the advertisement. I don't think it's any particular coach. There's no name associated with it. We'll just call him generic basketball coach because I don't think he's an actual, you know, representation of a real person. But uh, he says, hi, you fellows, better sharpen up those shooting eyes. And it just talks about basketball getting back into full swing. And that's kind of an allusion to um, the end of World War II. And down in the bottom of the advertisement here, there's just a paragraph here. It says, let's all boost the War Memorials That Live campaign to commemorate our war heroes. And so basically that's the uh, attitude there and the understanding that every returning veteran, uh, all of the troops that are coming back home from overseas uh, are a living monument to the work that we had just accomplished in the war. $18.77 for this one also, also from the Open Road for Boys, and both of these going to California. This advertisement for panties is a company called Be Free. And they make those garments out of uh, nylon spandex. And this ran in 17 Magazine, 1963. When you look at the detail of the ad here in the text, it says Be Free and Only Be Free. Panties feature the patented no-bind crotch. And I believe that m might be false advertising because for Lee overalls, denim overalls for men, they made overalls with a patented U-shaped crotch that was also uh, 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 advertised as a no-bind crotch. Now, the difference may be in what might get bound if something got bound, uh, and well, we won't go into detail, but, uh, be free. This ad sold for $12 and 77 cents. It's on its way to Wisconsin. All right. If you've watched many of my videos in recent months, you'll recognize this face. This is the fella who just won't go away. Uh, iron eyes. Cody tells you how he would run America if he were president and mostly it's just talking about the environment and being kind to each other and all that kind of stuff. I think this is fun though. Down here in the corner, he says, uh, what would be your favorite presidential perk? He said, setting up my TP 
on the White House lawn. It would be an eye catcher. But this is the first color picture and kind of enlarged picture we've seen of Iron Eyes Cody. And when I talk about that single tear that he shed over the state of the environment in America and what pollution was doing to the country, here, here's that single tear that I mentioned in the uh, Keep America Beautiful advertising campaign. Now, that campaign ran in the 1970s. It started in 1971. This magazine advertisement is from George Magazine, 1998. And it's talking about a relaunch of the legend legendary campaign. And so, basically, they're bringing it back around in 1998. Now, this is five years after the scandal erupted that I talked about in the video that I linked to from the last one. I'm going to link that video again in case you want to read about that scandal. But it has to do with, you know, who the fellow is, basically. Iron Eyes Cody. So, um, you can go back and watch that if you choose to. Um, he died the following year. After this ad ran, he died in 1999. But a great actor, great American, uh, fun to read about him, enlightening and interesting. This ad here, I had it priced, I think, at 1877, but this ad sold to the same person who bought the Iron Eyes Cody ad last week in last week's video. That person contacted me by message and says, hey, if I get another one, can you give me a break? So the actual price I charged for this one uh, wasn't 1877. It was only 1523. But that ad last week and this one both on their way to Missouri. This ad is for a product called Boggs Cranberry Liqueur. It shows the bottle. Uh, in the advertisement, it says it's both sweet and tart. This came from 1977 Classic Magazine. And you can see here where it says last one, one sold. I've got another one up for sale in the store. But in the detail here, you know, there, there's not really much to talk about. For the ad itself, I sold it for $16.77. It went to Idaho. But I will talk about the feedback I got and the curious message about this advertisement and how I responded. The first hint of trouble is when I saw this feedback that I got sometime around October the 12th or 13th. And this would have been after the delivery of the print ad that she ordered. But her, uh, her feedback says, I never received the package. I was looking forward because I already know the brand. I never received the package. I know the brand. I thought they went out of business. I was looking forward to trying in again. I think she meant trying it again, but I didn't receive it. And then there's a little bit of creative keyboard work there. But I, I, reading that, I kind of understood that the lady thought she ordered a bottle of booze and because she wanted to try it again. You can't try a print ad again. So she was she was wanting some liquor. Um, I you know, because there was nothing to really address there, it was just feedback. I didn't make any kind of a response until I got a message from her directly a couple of days later, and basically she said the same thing. She didn't receive her package. She had reported it to eBay and they hadn't responded. And so here's the response that I sent back to her. So I responded with the typical message about U.S. Post Office tracking confirms delivery to your address uh, on October the 11th. It was now the 16th, when I think, when I sent this reply. So I suggested that she talk to her letter carrier or maybe the postmaster. And uh, that's all that ever happened. Now, you know, here's, here's the thing. If she had said that she... Uh, received an ad that she didn't understand that she had ordered an advertisement, uh, I would have requested the return and refunded her money. But but she didn't say that. Um, also, um, if she had said, you know, 
the ad really didn't come. She wanted an ad. The ad didn't come. Well, this is a rare situation where I had a second copy and I could have replaced it if an ad was really what she wanted. But uh, I'm, I'm convinced that by the wording of her feedback that she thought she was getting the actual product there. So that's how that played out. Kind of fun, kind of interesting, sad for her. And, you know, I never want a customer to be disappointed with, you know, what they receive. And, you know, I, I try to make things right. But uh, the opportunity to, I guess, satisfy her didn't present itself. And so it, that's, you know, what I've described is how it stands. Let's go ahead and look at the last ad of the week coming up. This is a beautiful ad. Last one of the week. I just love the image on the picture here and the color palette. It's uh, uh, just visually, it's a real nice ad. This would look great in a cabin or a hunting lodge or just a man cave or something like that. The product is Winchester Expert Ranger Shotgun Shells. You can see here the guy's bird hunting. He's out enjoying his sport with his dogs. And this ran in True Magazine 1960, $16.77 sent this to Texas. All right, there is a look at all of my advertisements that sold in the 42nd week of 2024. To recap, there were 22 ads sold for a total of $324.94. On the screen there, you can see the breakdown of the magazines that these ads came from. Um, the ad, the uh, magazine that sourced the most ads this week was the magazine called 17. And I believe all four of those ads came from the year 1963. Uh, Open Road for Boys was second with three ads sold from that publication. Altogether, a fantastic week. And in general, I mean, last week you saw that uh, sales were less than $100, but as I mentioned, I hadn't been able to devote the time to the eBay store that I would have liked. Listings were down. The end and sell similar process uh, was sacrificed that week and some other things. So um, what I see in this week and in weeks since is that I'm generally trending upward into the fourth quarter as we all hope to do. So I'm excited to show you. I've got one more makeup video. And then the current sales week just closed last night. Um, you might have heard a few minutes ago that I had a sale today while I was recording this video. So I'll definitely have new ads to show you. I'm eager for you to see what's going on during the coming video. It's going to be fun. Come back next week when we'll talk about something else. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more content like this, there's several simple ways that you can support the channel. First of all, hit the like button. It just takes a moment. Second, if you have friends that you think would enjoy the content, go down below and send them a link to the channel. Also, leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you, even if it's just a friendly hello. Subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already and turn on notifications. It's that simple. Thanks again for watching. Oh,